cold, cold open. open. What's up, guys? This is the CMG Podcast. This is today's free episode. If you want this episode ad free and an extra bonus episode, you can find that right now on Patreon at patreon.com slash tiny And if not, Mystery of the flying saucers may soon be solved. If you've never smoked weed at literal Woodstock, you're not a stoner. Goodbye. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Ah, oh, gay as fuck. I'm trying to get my RC The so-called flying saucers. Look at all these fucking chickens. Malone Brown, do you hear this whole? No. Malone Brown dick in your mouth? <laughs> Fashion your seatbelt and get ready for the base. And we're back. <laughs> good, good evening, afternoon, morning, everyone. Someone got mad at me for coughing last week. Oh, they said. Someone said it to me. I think it was a Reddit post. That they said, uh, no- "Noel needs a cough drop." Those were the words. <laughs> I had one in, my guy. So, so fuck you. Yeah, well, not no. It's just we're not allowed to ever be unwell. Human? <laughs> You're never allowed to be unwell. Yeah, but, that's true. Yeah. You've been unwell for a minute now. I'm finally better. Yeah, that Good. thing kicked my ass, dude. What was the thing? It was just a sinus infection. Mm. I got tested for COVID multiple times. It was negative every time. I thought I had the cron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely thought I had the cron. It wasn't it. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I finally, I, I almost thought I was going to have to cancel all the shows in Phoenix. I was, it was on the edge like that. But um, got antibiotics and I finally fixed it. Uh, Phoenix is, is probably the best place to rehab from feeling unwell. <laughs> There's fuck it's, all to do. There's a lot of rehabs there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, physical rehab, <laughs> mental rehab. <laughs> <laughs> What a town, man. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, I get it. You know, if you want to live a simple life in the shittiest way possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it was nice weather-wise when we were there, but I can't imagine the other 300 days of the year when it's 100. Yeah, it's now like the perfect time for Arizona. <clears throat> yeah, it felt or like it. was it cold? No, it was a good temperature. Yeah. It was about 60 everywhere. And, and in that respect, I could understand... Sort of mm-hmm. wanting to live there, but yeah, it was just what a town. Were the shows good? Yeah, they're they're good. There's always one dud show, and <laughs> you always hope that one lands in the middle. Mm-hmm. But it, it was the first one. Was so, it really? Yeah. So <laughs> once so, the first one out of five, it made me think, oh, is is this what medium is going to be <laughs> for the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> No, but then the the show right after it was the best one all weekend, which was, you know. So did you do three days? Yeah. Two a day? Two a day, and then the last day I do one. I cap it. That's a grind. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's it's definitely it's definitely weird. Uh cause then if you, you know, on Friday, it was such a solid show, you know, I I felt like I beat the level, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like do we we have to do it again. Yeah. Because we had to do it three more times. <laughs> and so uh, the Saturday Late Show was a head fuck because the way the venue was set up, it was a music venue. It wasn't for stand-up, really. Um, and so at the back of the room, there's a wall that they put up, and but on the other side of it is another venue. So they can open up that wall, and you can, you know, the crowd can go spill out into this other area, which is pretty cool. But... <laughs> About 30 minutes into the, the my set, you can start to hear someone covering, like, Brandon Yuri and, like, really high-pitched singing stuff. <laughs> okay. So then, you know, with about 20 minutes left, it just pretty faintly, but audibly enough, you just hear, ah! just this weird wailing, and I'm like, who the fuck is that? And the people in the back are, like, laughing, and, I, and then... I just try to keep doing my set, and I try to play off it. Like, oh, what if that screaming was just in my head, you know? 
but nah, all of us in the room were just trying to pretend like for the last happening? 20. Yeah, we're like, yeah, we're here for a stand-up show. What was it, like a punk show or something? <laughs> was... I don't know. He was just covering like pop punk-ish type but stuff. It was in the same venue? Just... It was in the same venue, but on the other side of a wall. It was. <laughs> Who thought that was a good idea? I guess they have like a two-wall system uh, that normally does it pretty well but um they put one up to like sell some extra seats mm. so yeah uh it, it was it was pretty funny because at that point everyone's like buzz was kind of fading off and they're just like uh, uh, yeah this is funny dude let's <laughs> this is hurting my brain though like let's go <laughs> let's wrap it up because yeah i'm kind of into this what's yeah. going on back <laughs> <Yeah>. here <laughs> <laughs> no it was it was good though yeah, I asked that question, who booked, or like, who who thought of that? And <coughs> and then I think we used to literally record our podcast in a rehearsal studio. Yeah, yeah. With like metal bands. Yeah. Practicing drums yeah. and shit, like two doors down from us. And we had full-on episodes with like sex music the whole time. <laughs> full-on R&B. Yeah. So. We talked about that, right? Definitely. Yeah, many times. We... <laughs> you would record through it. Yeah. we just say, uh, pretend like it's not there. Yeah. We'd be like... So what'd you do this weekend? And there's weed smoke just pouring through, the, like through the vents. You can see it just wrapping around and crawling down the wall. And you're like, are we also getting contact high from this? <laughs> yeah, dude. So I was thinking about this unconvincing gay actor. Man, I could go for some Doritos right now. <laughs> Those were the erotic episodes. Yeah. <laughs> we should do erotic episodes in the bonus. <laughs> we take our voice octave down like two, you know, like a vocal effect. Yeah. So we both sound like Barry Damn. White. Yeah. <laughs> Just talk about regular Damn. shit, but it's really sexy. So how was Phoenix? It was hot. <laughs> that shit. <laughs> Man, I was sweating. So hot, Damn. so hot. <laughs> Background <laughs> vocal. Mm. Yeah, dude. It was, you know, I was. Uh, I'm trying to think. Of so oh, man, there's something that happened there that I'm trying to remember. But uh, fuck it, who cares? Yeah, Phoenix, leave that town if you can. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I talk shit. It's just. It's like you know, it's Vegas just without the strip. Yeah, without the fun shit. <laughs> yeah, without all the cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I read who lives here, and it's just a lot of retired people and what they call snowbirds. What are snowbirds? Canadians that want to get away from the cold. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's funny. That's yeah. really funny. My mom's like best friend. We were driving back from Sedona, and I met my mom for breakfast in Phoenix because like one of her best friends has a place there. Yeah, and they're yeah. both. I mean, she's from Calgary. Yeah, I, th I think they just, you know, you do years of that cold and they just want the dead opposite. Yeah. yeah. that That's actually kind of funny that it's 110 there, but for the Canadians, it's like 70. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just so, like, their body temperature just puts so negative. <laughs> it has to be 110 for them to warm up. Like, oh, yeah, it's nice. Huh? Dude, it's my heat and my house is broken because, I mean, of course. why not? Yeah. Right? Yeah. What the Bro fuck works in the house? Yeah. That's Bro what I want to know. Broken kitchen, broken everything. heater, broken everything. floor. Nothing works. Yeah. And so we found out the heat, it was broken because we turned it on. Like, you know, the first, like, cold night, I think it was, like, last week, right? <laughs> like, end of the week. He turned it on. That's what broke it. We turned the heat on <laughs> and the air starts blowing, but it's, so funny. it's just air. <laughs> You're going like to love just... this house, man. Uh, just, you know, never turn on. <laughs> yeah. It's working now. But uh, just don't turn it on. Just now. never turn it on again. Yeah, that's usually what, what breaks it. Yeah. If we turn it on, it's just air blowing. Of course. And I'm like, put my hand up. I'm like, I think it's warm. And it's on for like three hours. Doesn't do shit. And we wake up a couple, a couple mornings ago, and our room was 59 degrees. <laughs> and, I, and Kelsey's like dying. And I'm like, I'm chilling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. Are you kidding me? This is, oh, this is quite regular, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's actually quite nice. It is quite nice. I slept Ooh. like a baby. I don't we know haven't had a day Irish like this in a time. long time. Slept like a baby. <laughs> it's actually quite nice, eh? <laughs> oh, shite. Why are you so cold? <laughs> oh, me nuts have shriveled into me body. 
<laughs> it's right cold. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <clears throat> so what are you gonna do? Just w- sit in. Well, I gotta get it fixed. Yeah, thousand dollars. Yeah. Fuck yeah! I had the guy it. come yesterday. Run it. He looked at it for like a uh, an hour and was like, "Yeah, I don't know. It's not working though, for sure." What's his butt crack? I was crack? like, "Word." What's I know. Butt crack like? <laughs> I was like, "Look at the thermometer." <laughs> I could already tell that. He's like, "Yeah, I think we just got to replace the whole thing." I was like, "Of course, <laughs> of course. Let's replace the whole fucking house." Yeah. Yeah. Let's just knock it down and start over. Yeah. And that's an, the, the fucking, not to, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to do like the dad house complaining shit right now. Wait, what was the guy's butt crack like? It was, a, he actually had a sick crack. <laughs> All things considered, like pretty dope crack. I love going through construction stuff because you just, you get to know guys in capacity that you didn't ask. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, <laughs> sick, man. Yeah. You're just like coming downstairs, you like double take, oh, <laughs> yo, bro. Yeah. <laughs> dope crack, man. <laughs> No, I just walk up and I just put my one finger down the <laughs> at the top of the crack. I'm like, nice, dude. He's like, swarm in there, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Yeah, quite humid. Yeah. Yeah, keep it heated up for the clients. I'm surprised you're sweating so much. As yeah. It's 59 degrees in here. So. Yeah, well, when you get down in here, it gets hot. <laughs> yeah, when you're doing the work that I do, trust me, you get some swass. I, you, you, get, you typically get hot because the heater's broken. That's what I figured out. <laughs> is uh, Your heater's broken, that's why... <laughs> It's hot down here. All the heat is trapped here. So anyway. So. so the shit with the AC thing, right? Yeah. It was leaking, mold, whatever. Got all that fixed. Now there's a giant hole in my roof, so I got to get it patched. I got to get, get the drywall fixed, right? It's like drywall guy comes, and he's like, uh, yeah, I can, I can, yeah, I can do this a couple weeks. Do you have the paint? Like, what do you mean the paint? He's like, the paint for the roof. Oh, like, yeah. It's white. What do you mean? It's drywall. It's like, you gotta, what do you oh, mean? No. It's like, yeah, if we don't have this color, then you got to repaint the whole roof. Yep. Fucking, of course. Yeah. Of course we got to repaint though. Let's, yep. Let's do the whole fucking house while we're at it. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. How much? Yep. A million bucks? Let's do it. Yeah. 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 And I, I love how um, buying paint is like almost like buying weed. It's very, you know, like very specific. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. certain strains. Yeah. Just very, you know. This paint is more of a body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, the way, the way this one was mixed and grown, you know, it's just got a different, you know, feel to it. So, yeah, you have to have the exact paint code. We had a similar thing. We, you know, we had a fucking hole in our floor, and we we were this close to having to redo all our floors. Yeah. Dude, and it's so funny. The guy, you know, we're talking about solutions, and our contractor is like, well, uh, we could just sand down the whole floor and try to paint over it. You're like, let's burn it down, actually. Yeah. yeah. Let's burn the whole place down, how much and it- we'll rebuild it from scratch. That way, we know we're, we're getting everything. Yeah, we get around. Yo, how, how much is a bulldozer? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just, I'll clock in. I'll yeah. just push the whole thing down, yeah, and yeah. we can start over. Hey, guys, we'd like to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Babbel. Learning a new language can feel intimidating. When mm-hmm. I first decided to give Spanish a shot... <laughs> Yep. I was worried about the level of difficulty, the time commitment, and having to hear how my accent sounded out loud. Uh, but thanks to Babbel, the number one selling language learning app, the whole process was addictively fun, fast, and easy. Whether you want to learn a new language for an upcoming trip or as an engaging new hobby, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons for real-world use. Um, for example, hola, me llamo Cody. Me gusta la playa. I learned all of that in seconds, and you can too. <laughs> Whether on the go or staying at home, Babbel has made learning fun for me. <laughs> nice, man. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Bueno. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. And right now, you can save up to 65% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash TMG. That's babbel.com slash TMG for up to 65% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. It was actually kind of funny. Um, 
we go to this flooring place and we're they have rules about you know regular civilians aren't allowed inside it was really vip you know <laughs> nice it was pretty it was like it was trying to like go into the soho house <laughs> okay you know this flooring company in south la <laughs> okay. you know they're like it wasn't even South LA. It was like the other side of the 110. We go up in there. They're like, ah, uh, uh, no. <laughs> and Alina says, Alina, she's she does the classic. It it just works everywhere. If you're if you're a lady, you can get into any club. Oh no, my my friends come, my. Do you know my friend? And she name drops our our contractor. And they go, oh, okay, yeah, you're cool, you're cool, because they look him up on the list and they're like, okay. he's on our list. Okay. So then. <clears throat> List of what? Dope uh, contractors? Yeah, just, you know, sick-ass contractors. List of sexy contractors? Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and so, uh, it's, we, for the hole in our floor, we just need maybe, you know, 10 or 20 pieces of wood. How of big's this. the hole? I mean, it's like fucking... Let me think, let me think. <laughs> It's it's probably like twelve feet long and like six feet wide. You're like doing calculations. Do you want meters or Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so twelve feet long. So it's a big hole. It's a big ass. Okay, hole. okay. You're going like this, so I thought Yeah. So they you know, uh but we just need, you know, little cuts of wood to like put in. And so she basically she kind of strong arms the dude there because she she gives him the code for the for the thing. And this is what's awesome. She hands him the code for the wood, and then they go bring out a piece. And it's like, yeah, they changed the dye, so uh, looks like you're just never gonna get that <laughs> that color of wood ever again. And we're like, cool for sure. Yeah, sick. Yeah. And before I start weeping, Alina just she just starts. You know, she's like, you don't have old boxes. Go back there and look if you got some old box. The guy's like, I, I think we do. It was like some Jedi. <laughs> She's like, I think you may have old boxes. He's like, I will go back and check. <laughs> and he goes and he does it. And fucking, like, miracle. Oh. There just happened to be, like, the exact amount of wood that we needed. <laughs> and it, it saved us a shit ton of money. But... Oh, man, that's so sad that that's, like, a good day. Yeah. Now. Yeah. How's your day? Fucking, we're blessed. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we're fucking blessed. Yeah. The guy in the back. Had the extra wood boxes, and now we don't have. Oh, oh it's a beautiful day. It's, what a time to be alive, truly. <laughs> yeah, well, it was great because once we finally put the wood in, everything matched. The whole house collapsed. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we took one seat on the couch. We're like, it's finally done. <laughs> <laughs> just, just falling down for too long. Yeah, and. <laughs> We sat where the hole was, and everything around the hole fell yeah, apart. Yeah. But the wood on the hole... And you're like... <sighs> yeah, and you're sitting on that one spot. And it's perfect. And everything else is collapsed around yeah. you into the earth. So yeah. there's like this giant hole. <laughs> like, guess we got to get that fixed now. Yeah, yeah. so... <laughs> how much is this going to get to... How much is this going to be to fix? <laughs> $200 billion. <sighs> guess we got to do it. I think. I think the... The point here is, unless you have, I, I think unless you become really spiritual or you have a billion dollars, nothing is really ever that perfect. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a really good point. I, I was a, complaining about this to my friend. He's like, it's just every place. Yeah. Every Think about every apartment that you've had or anything. Everything always breaks all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's just nice when you have someone to call and be like, hey, can you, like, if you live in an apartment building mm -hmm. or whatever, and you're like, hey, this thing broke, and they're like, cool, and someone else deals with it. <laughs> but that assumes you have a good landlord. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Because <laughs> we know how landlords are. Yeah. Fucking a beautiful, a AKA wonderful us. people. Yeah, when, when people call me about the apartment complex, I'm running in a Decentraland. Yes. I, yes. I hang up that Discord call so quick. Yeah. I'm like, you know, it's like, boom, boom, boom. That's not, that's the Skype, but whatever. Yeah. You know, I answer my Discord call. I'm like, yellow. Hey, yeah. the, um, the toilet has been being weird in my Decentraland place. Oh. <laughs> it's not real life. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I play along. Okay. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's being weird. It, like, it keeps running. Like once every couple flushes, it'll just stay running. I can't get it to stop. Yeah. Like reach in there. Uh, okay. I, yeah. I'll see what I can do. It's uh, it's just uh, you know the pipes in the city. It's a whole 
let me call my guy. You know, I'll I'll, uh, I'll call you back and, and give me ten minutes. <laughs> I'll call you back ten minutes. Okay. Ten minutes. Okay. All right. The pipes you said. Yeah, I call. Him, okay. Boop. And I don't call him back. <laughs> <laughs> I love the thought of just normal shit happening in Decentraland. Yeah, and your crypto. <laughs> <laughs> so I, or just just like maybe it's like other stuff. Yo, dude, the the pixels you use for the roof color on the apartment, they're like they're like there's they're you there's, didn't pay you didn't pay the license. Like it's a, like across the roof it says license unavailable. Or or yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's like a big area. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a font. Yeah. Yeah. It's you, like, gotta, you didn't buy the color. You didn't buy like the full color, I guess, for commercial use. Oh, or, there's two pixels that are different color from the rest. Yeah, well, we got to repaint the whole roof. Yeah, uh, we got to license a whole new color. <laughs> it's going to be a whole thing. Let me call you back. Let me let me call you back. Let me give you an <laughs> update on that. Painter guy. Yeah, then people pull up in your central land apartment. What's up with the roof? <laughs> dude, our <laughs> landlord <laughs> sucks, dude. D- dude, don't bring this up. My roommate's going to be so pissed. <laughs> so funny like a floating <laughs> frog or some shit being like what's up with the roof yeah <laughs> why is it so weird <laughs> it's a yeah, yeah octopus yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and then and then two guys dressed like mark zuckerberg what's up with the roof <laughs> what's up with the roof <laughs> don't ask it with the voice bro it's so creepy <laughs> it's funnier that way hey what's up with this roof <laughs> yeah man yeah, I can't wait to ruin people's lives with my apartment complex. Yeah. In Decentraland. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Just changing the locks on all the doors. Mm-hmm. The whole complex of users standing up. Yo, can you get in my fucking place? Oh yeah, we had to change the lo- oh. We call we'll we'll call our guy. We'll get you back in there. Just give us a few days. <laughs> It's been three months. <laughs> yeah, bought this fucking condo in Decentraland. I can't even fucking get in. The landlord changed the locks for security and we're just stuck out. Damn. Yeah. Anyway. Um, we got big news, guys. Yeah. Big news. <laughs> it kind of rambled for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, though. Yeah. Big news. Uh, we have, or are starting, sorry, a brand new weekly TMG newsletter. Yeah. Yeah, it's a that's right. It's a new project. Uh, it's email based. We thought it'd be dope. I think the the reasoning behind it is pretty. It's pretty close to us, and I think it's close to everyone on this show. Um, so you all know, uh, one of our key artists, Jim Pfizer. He's done a whole lot of art. He I don't put, know if people know. Or his maybe name. they don't. Jim. I mean, we've always referred to him just as Jim. Yeah. <laughs> just really nondescript. Yeah. Yeah, Jim did this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he did our current TMG logo, the one that you see behind the Christmas tree. He's done a ton of art, all the crazy comic book influenced art. We even talked a while ago about potentially doing a, you know, a a coffee table book with like uh, comics that he's created in them. We're actually sitting on like, I don't know, like 40, 50 comics. Yeah, I don't think we ever told anyone about that because we weren't sure what to do with them. Oh, well. We've been working with Jim now for what three years? Yeah, Kyle, four years, three years. I would say about three. Well, the first project that we ever worked on. How do we find him in the first place? To Twitter? Um, no, I think it was just Instagram. He just okay, yeah. He was could created some pretty wild, um, you know, images of us, and we we're like, this is fucking hilarious. Yeah. So the first project that we ever worked on with him, we were like, how cool would it be to do a graphic novel, basically, like a book like this, but it's just all of our most famous podcast bits, but illustrated in mm-hmm. this comic book style. And so in the background, he worked on this for a while, like Dr. You know, Bad months. Dick. And yeah. And all that and we stuff. have like 50 pages of insanely hilarious, yeah. amazing comic book art, thanks to Jim, that's just sitting in a Dropbox. And we keep wondering what to do with it, whether we're going to print it or what have you. And anyways, we, we had the idea of starting like a email newsletter, basically. and so the way we're going to distribute this art now is every week there's going to be a new comic. So the newsletter goes out on Fridays, right? Yep, yeah. Fridays. <clears throat> yeah, but, you know, the, the, there'll be more than that. There's mm-hmm. a bunch of exclusive content. And I think, you know, the thing that makes this close to us is that, you know, Jim has done all the Moment House flyers. He did the Trillionaire Mindset 
you know, art. Uh, he, he's done a lot for us. <clears throat> and so recently we had hit him up to work on something like we always do. And he responded to us saying that, uh, you know, given just his situation, he had to hang it up for commissioned art because uh, he had to take up a full-time job, um, which he had worked in the past, but uh, he, he kind of had to go back to it. And we were like, what? What? <laughs> no. Like, that can't happen. So we basically, um, you know, uh, figured it out, and we brought him on uh, full-time. So he's full-time on the ship, which is awesome. Um, so this is, like, one of the many things that he's going to be a part of. Uh, apart from the comics, he'll just be creating real sick art for this newsletter. So, uh, yeah, I mean, with the, the newsletter, we'll... In addition to his art, we're going to try to just, I don't know, we're going to have fun with it. Yeah, we're going to share, like, stuff that we're listening to. Uh, Music-wise, <laughs> just, I'll try to give you guys a very shitty media suggestion. Film or TV show. Yeah. You know. This it, week, this week I'd say my movie is The Alpinist. <clears throat> oh. Have you watched that? We can get into that. We'll, in we'll get into yeah, that yeah, afterwards. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it'll be shit like that. Like, stuff where... Reading, listening to, uh, like, a recap of what happened that week, like, within TMG Studios. Um, and then fresh art every week. A comic. Um, Jim's going to, like, put his magic touch on on it every week so that it feels like it's something of value yeah. to you guys. And it, it feels really dope and alive. And I, I think it's a great project. Yeah, we're also, uh, finally, you know, a lot of you guys ask for annotations and stuff. But whenever we have, you know, <laughs> TikToks of, you know... <laughs> Tesla's hitting camels and and all that stuff. We're gonna try to include a section in there too, where we yeah, there will be <laughs> a section just strictly for animal abuse. animal yeah animal. It's not abuse. Sorry, accidental accidental animal harm. Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah, there's not going to be a right. a maybe some weeks h yeah. No, we just we're just gonna try to give you guys some of the <clears throat> just like the media that we put in the podcast, like in a concise place. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can just sign up. I uh, think it's on TMGstudios.tv. Yeah, new domain, by the way. Oh, new domain just dropped. <laughs> TMGstudios.tv. Yeah, That's go a there. brand new domain. Go there. Just stick your little email in the field and, and click subscribe, and you'll get it. If you um, have bought merch, then you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you want to, if you, if you want to, if you're not sure and you want to um, get the weekly comic and all the other good shit, then tmgstudios.tv. Yeah. And we appreciate it if you do that. Yeah. <clears throat> and the first one comes out this Friday, so yeah. it'll be tomorrow if you're listening on Thursday. Go sign up, uh, strap in for what we feel is going to be a year of really sick art. Let's pull, let's pull up one of the comics just so people can get a little... Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's just look up. Muscle Beach Freak. Uh, let's read this for maybe everyone that's listening. Yeah, because we can forget you punch that in? people just, just listen to this show. What? Wait, what? What bit was this? I think this is... That's the other thing. Jim, uh, he writes these. And he... he uh, I think we should say he doesn't just translate one-to-one -one the bit to the thing. Like, he definitely... He tells a story with these. <laughs> Wait, is this us roasting a, yeah. like a muscle guy? Yeah, I guess so. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh my god. All right. This is titled <laughs> Muscle Beach Freak and it's us on Venice. So the first frame is a fucking yoked dude working out and then just a, It looks like me now. Yeah. Not as muscly though, of course. Yeah. I mean, this guy's not as muscly as me. Yeah, yeah. No, this guy wishes he was here. Uh, <laughs> He's got my hair now, dude. Yo, All freak right. show, what's good? <laughs> oh shit, I didn't know I'd pull up to the circus today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's you too yeah where's where's your girlfriend with the mustache homie <laughs> where's your mom with the beard <laughs> you dumb freak weirdo <laughs> the f they the fuck what was that the fuck they make you out of dog die cast metal <laughs> what special effects team put you together <laughs> oh shit Thanos pulled up damn <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker what's your what is that where's your glove motherfucker where's your glove uh <laughs> <laughs> Do the line. I am inevitable. <laughs> Thanos. Damn. Do it. Do it. Do it. Now we're just do socking it. him in the thigh. Come on, do it. Come on, you Come on, big, you big, stupid, stupid freak. freak. <laughs> 
and the bodybuilder's just crying. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. Us pulling up, just shitting Soft on. Soft as shit. Just, <laughs> just fucking bullying a, a meat. A big ass bodybuilder. Yeah, big ass dude. Cool nice body dysmorphia, dude. Yeah. Why do you look like Hawaiian bread? <laughs> you got issues, bro. <laughs> Why does your ass look like your chin, dude? <laughs> your ass is hard, dude. It's square. Damn. Nice, Nice Jim. biceps, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> To just walk into the gym with your friends, like you guys just clock in, like you just sweat, and every every bodybuilder's like, oh fuck no, and, and here they come, and they're just the, the boys are just dressed regular, yeah yeah, and we're just like walking through as a squad, and everyone's like trying not to look at us. We push one meathead, like six foot five, like three hundred pound meathead, push him, and he hits the mirror, and he's like, oh, oh. like oh what's wrong? A Muscles not big enough to stop the fall, you fucking loser. <laughs> Yo, somebody get this guy a protein shake. He yeah, just dude, fell over. Somebody get this guy some grilled salmon. Fucking <laughs> idiot. Your breath smells like asparagus. Yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> hey, guys, we want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, HelloFresh. What is HelloFresh? Well, with HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. The holidays can be hectic, but HelloFresh helps keep things simple with recipes that cut back on meal prep and cleanup so you can spend less time in the kitchen and more quality time with friends and family. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options providing plenty of variety. Ingredients travel from the farm to your door within a week so you get the convenience without <laughs> skimping on the quality. Plus, skip trips to the grocery store and avoid the long holiday lines. And don't forget dessert. Oh, my. Satisfy your sweet tooth with seasonal limited time goodies like ginger spiced cake truffles and cherry cheesecake swirl bars. <laughs> Those sound really good, honestly. And you know, as things get crazier during the holidays, I've found myself having less time for dinner. It's stressful. But now I've got all my problems figured out with HelloFresh and their quick and easy meals. I love the Bebombop. <laughs> It's fun to cook, and it tastes great. Yeah. Yeah, so if uh, you want to join Cody on that bebimbop uh, and more, uh, you can go to hellfresh.com slash tinymeat14 and use code tinymeat14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. That's hellfresh.com slash tinymeat14. Use code tinymeat14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. <laughs> we should, yeah, we should make... A full Riverdale Protein farts. A full Riverdale movie <laughs> where <laughs> yeah, it's all bodybuilders and they're all really fucking insecure about like these shithead skinny kids that come through the gym. And nice, just... nice protein farts, stinky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have protein farts. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, you do, man. You stink like broccoli and rice. <laughs> just, then just of course. Yo, didn't your mom die in that accident? Yeah. She did die in that accident. What is your problem? Maybe if she stayed around, she would have told you not to fucking look like that, <laughs> stinky ass. Jesus Christ, just uncalled for yeah, shit. Yeah, because in those shows, they're always like telling the plot. They're like, you know, yeah. just straight line telling the character yeah. motivation. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, don't you work out because like you're sad that your mom's dead? <laughs> Kelsey said that's what the Sex and the City reboot was like. Yeah. Because this is so far in the future now. Oh. They're having to like do so much wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> so the writing is just horrible. Yeah. I, I, Alina and I watched the first episode of the new Dexter. Um, I, was, I was loving it until they brought back his inner monologue. And then I just I said, no, I don't like Wait, it. Wait, there's a new Dexter? Mm hmm. Yeah. They just, rebooted it? Mm hmm. After how long? 10. It was 10. Why? It, it completely went <clears throat> under the radar. It, I don't uh, know why they do that. I, I really like if they brought back the office, I'd be like, don't. Don't, don't. Let yeah. it. Let it just live as a body of work. It's mm. beautiful. It's perfect. It's over. Just leave it. Yeah. Dexter was interesting because Dexter, you know, I had only watched a couple seasons, but it was always really, it was on the edge of CW. It was really corny. And then this, they shot it 
pretty I don't know. It 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 Showtime did it and it felt very much like a Showtime or like HBO, like a higher level scripted show. And uh it, it was kind of it was dope, you know, just lots of a lot of silence. It was it was pretty artistic and then um uh and then you started fucking a cop in the first like three or four minutes huh. and you find out that's his girlfriend but i was like yep there we go ah. of course and then he goes to do his first murder and then his inner monologue comes back and he straight up comes from killing this dude oh no it's like, how do we how how many shows do we need of you know <clears throat> dude with inner monologue being like are you the one for me oh you're talking about you yeah i feel Did like you have an inner monologue in the original yeah, nice. so it's like Dexter so you, ended, and then Netflix was like, "Why don't we make our own?" Yeah. So then they got John Netflix Mayer to do so it. So good at that. Yeah, John Mayer. <laughs> That's all that show is. Yeah, yeah. What if John Mayer actually killed, killed people? Me. <laughs> that'd be so hot. Yeah, exactly. God, that'd be so hot. What if John Mayer was obsessed with me and killed me? Yeah, that'd be really cool. And now that you, you know, you ended, so then Dexter New Blood came back. Gotcha. Man, when he stabs that guy, he nuts, bro. He like, he just two hands with the knife through the guy's chest, and he just, <laughs> and he looks at himself in the mirror. <laughs> and flexes? Yeah. <laughs> God, you're fucking hot. American Oh, you style. killed the fuck out of that guy. Yeah, oh. You killed the fuck out of that dude, dude. <sighs> Man, you stabbed the shit out of that guy. <laughs> The guy's like screaming. He's like, "You fucking rule!" Ah! He's like, "No, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up!" Taking me out of it. You're uh, taking me out of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. And that guy's dialogue. You know, they they made his dialogue so atrocious that you were so happy when he died. <laughs> the guy that he killed. Yeah, yeah. Because the you know Dexter's new thing is that he works in a small town gun store or a hunting store. So he's trying to, you know, just have a routine and live a life. And then, yeah, spoiler alert, but you knew this guy was going to die. Yeah. And he comes in and he, he wants to buy a gun. He's trying to be this rich douchebag. And then <laughs> Dexter goes, you want that gun? It's $9,000. He's like, yeah, I just got a fat bonus from Morgan Stanley. Oh, God. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. They're like, what's the worst thing we could have him say in this moment yeah. to make him super hateable? Just got a fat check got from Morgan. Fat bonus from, from Morgan, Morgan Stanley. Stanley. <laughs> Insert bank name here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you find out he like killed a bunch, like he drove a boat into a bunch of people and killed five people. So he deserves to die. Basically. Yeah. Is that what Dexter's about? Yeah. Yeah. It's all. So he kills people that deserve to die? Yeah. Ah. That's a good idea for a show. Yeah. <laughs> I got to watch that. Yeah. But who 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 makes him the decider of, you know? Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I've been still. I've just been crushing Sopranos. <clears throat> what? <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? Nice. It's a really good show. I just feel you're gonna slowly start adopting things. You're gonna come in one day like all leather coat. <laughs> no, it's gonna be that is that style where he wears like the polo. Uh, yeah. Short sleeve polo with yeah. some weird pattern on it. Yeah. And like the kind of gray slacks and yep. some leather shoes. Yeah. He's actually dripping. Yeah. It is a great, he drips, yeah. it, which is very clear because every girl wants to fuck him. I don't, I don't get how much that guy fucks. I mean, I, 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 I want to watch the show, so. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You haven't no, seen it. No, it's fine. I haven't. Yeah. Well, spoiler alert. He fucks. Okay. <laughs> every time he starts like, you know, I don't know. Every time he like gives that look to a new girl, Kelsey and I are like, "Uh oh, <laughs> he's taking her to the tone zone." <laughs> <laughs> and it happens in like every episode. It's it's wild. I'm like, this is this is just Californication, but yeah, Italian mobster edition, yeah. yeah, Italian mob edition. Great hey, show. Hey, I'm but in the mob, but I'm getting my dick sucked. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole show. <laughs> Yeah, yeah much. give me a fucking cigar so I can get my dick sucked. <laughs> By the way, I'm in the mob. By the way, I'm in the mob. That's why she wants to suck my dick. 
That, that are, there it is. Yeah. Right there. There he is. Our boy. Rest in peace. What a wonderful character. Yeah. Truly lovable, but a villain at the same time. Yeah. You that's, know? that's how people like it. Like um, Tom. Like Tom. Oh. Yeah, oh. Are we going to do? Are we going to talk about that right now? Well, Shiv, uh, where do I fit in? Yeah, we're gonna we're getting into success. Speaking of getting your fucking dick sucked, S yeah, dude, suck session. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert! Spoiler alert! Please, Please fast, fast forward, forward at, at least, least five, five minutes. minutes. Uh, I know it's gonna be twenty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can put the time code time code on screen if you want, dude. Just just yeah, sure. Just pause it. I don't know. Pause know. it. Go watch it, and then come back. Yeah, this is we're talking about se uh, season three, episode nine, the season finale of, of Succession. Sucks God sucks damn, one of the best episodes of television I've ever watched. How is I was Logan glued to the screen like this the whole time, <laughs> like a child? Yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, it was really cool seeing how all the foreshadowing hit. Mm -hmm. You know, someone brought up in. Uh, season one that Kendall said uh, dad is so fucking jealous of what he's given to his kids that he would take it all from them and he did that yep um, and then did you did you rewatch that clip of Tom helping Logan take a piss uh, no I didn't oh man the dialogue in that is very like so <clears throat> when when Logan was going mad from the UTI and all the kids were arguing with each other. Tom was the one to help him to the bathroom to take a piss. And so he's holding up Logan. And uh, he's like, do you, do, you, he's like do, do you need some help? Do you want me to help you to stand? Uh, do you want me to hold the scepter? Or do you got it? Like talking about his dick. And he's like, no, I got it. And then he turns to him and he puts his hand on him. He says, thanks, son. And then, mm -hmm. and then you know, there's like all these sort of like little moments leading up. And so when he when Tom burned them all, it kind of made sense. So did did Shiv know at the very end? Was that her look? Yeah, I think. So she she realized that she thought of Logan leaving and like putting his arm on Tom's shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, and you I know, think she was like, "Holy fuck!" And Shiv said all this shit to Tom, like, you know, "Fuck you, I don't love you." Oh God, that moment was horrible. Yeah. So why wouldn't he burn her? Yeah. Fuck oh her. yeah, absolutely. Fuck her. Fuck Shiv. Yeah. Fuck them all. <clears throat> and then, you know, there's all the other great pieces of symbolism. Too bad, you know. I, I, I feel what was nice in the whole thing was that uh, Kendall, I felt, kind of got vindicated. He's like, I, I try to take this dude out. And yeah. You guys clowned me the whole time. And yeah. You called me an idiot. Maybe I didn't do it right. Yeah. But look. Yeah. He just fucked you both. Yeah. And then Roman finally... You know, yeah, Roman being on his knees at the end and Kendall like holding his shoulders, being like, Now you know how I feel. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty wild. Yeah, get fucked. God, what a good episode. Role reversal, seriously. Yeah, it was, um, it was crazy. Everyone's acting in that episode. Oh Woo! my god, that last scene <clears throat> of Logan. Oh my god, <laughs> Logan fucking mock Shiv. Yeah, but you need the majority. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude, I yeah. died. I was like, holy fuck. I was like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> and it means a majority. Just shut up. Shut up. <laughs> and then the mom fucking them over oh. on a fucking speakerphone like that. Horrible human. And being like, love you, bye. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Was... Everything was, is perfect. It was I, perfect. I almost want to rewatch it. Same. I was thinking that yesterday. Yeah, it was so good. I just want to see it again. So but you need the majority. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Get <laughs> fucked. Man. I also love uh, Lampson. Is that his name? The CEO of Gojo? What's his name? Oh, um, Matson. Matson. Love that yeah. guy for some reason. Arth I don't know why. Like, weird actor, but like weirdly charismatic. Alex Alexander Skarsgård? He's not a weird actor. No, I don't know. I mean, he's definitely got What's some weird in? roles. He was in Pretty Little Liars. Mm. He got his uh, fake dick smashed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nicole yeah. Kidman That's what hit I mean. The fuck out of his dick. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Wait, that was him. That was him. The husband. Yeah. Oh. 
I meant weird character. I meant like they give him kind of like a, I don't know, his vibe is off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could just say that he's Dutch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Weird, like European vibe. Yeah, like a weird kind of European. <laughs> Dude, just say you don't like Dutch people, okay? Just, just tell the no, truth. No, that's not what it is. <laughs> Cody hates Dutch people. Confirmed. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I, I, I loved his uh, just you know, straight up demeanor and just. I noticed you're not punching me in the face. Yeah. When when Logan told Roman to leave. Yep. I was I was thinking, just like that. Yeah. He's just gonna shit out all the kids yeah. just like that. Yep. Because Logan did the math. He's like, oh, pretty, pretty maybe good. this does work for me. So here's my question: Is like, did the kids? They're worried about maintaining control of the family company, mm -hmm. and obviously the company will kind of cease to exist once it's part of Gojo or whatever. Yeah. But they're not fucked in terms of wealth, right? Maybe. Like they're not gonna be as powerful because they don't. They're not in control of like a major corporation. But, like, they're still going to inherit Logan's wealth and everything, like, right? Maybe. I just want, wonder to what degree he fucked them. Like, when he was like, build your own pile. Did that mean, like, you're, I'm leaving you with nothing? I think it's sort of that, because I think for them, they, you know, they were kind of thinking, oh, we'll just inherit one of the biggest media companies ever, right. and we will, you know we will get to assume the same power that our father had and we'll get to be that. And now they're just going to be a bunch of rich kids with money. Yeah. And they have to go start their own thing and maybe they aren't going to be good enough to do that. Wow. God, hell. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel so bad for them. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ. What, what a horrible life. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, we want to take another quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, Movement. Holy shit, it's almost the holidays. And Movement, the original watch brand to break all the rules, started by two college dropouts who didn't want to overpay for a nice watch, has you covered. Now they're bringing you the sleekest, most quality gifts of the season with hundreds of watches, blue light glasses, sunnies, and fine jewelry styles to choose from. Stuff your stockings, impress your family, wow your partners, or treat yourself because we know you're dressing up with the perfect gift from Movement. And Movement is making it easy. Beautiful creative gift boxes, his and hers gift guides, and free quick shipping right to your door, just in time for the holidays. Uh, you know, I love the Eclipse watch. It has a great look with its all over gold steel. The best part for me is that it's water resistant. Love Lit that. Yeah, literally yeah. built for adventure. Truly, love adventure. Yeah, like me. Mm. The Eclipse makes the perfect gift. I've received a bunch of compliments on my watch, and you can too. <laughs> Movement watches are designed in house and are super sleek, clean, and won't break your bank since they start at just $95. Movement has clean, minimal designs and quality products. Movement has sold almost 2 million watches in over 160 countries. Wow. Uh, so you can be a big winner this holiday season with a gift from Movement. Go to movement.com slash TMG. That's M-V-M-T dot com slash T-M-G. Join the movement. It's, it's really, Logan, Logan's really a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's so mean what he did to those kids. <laughs> so the, only, the only person out of all of them who did it right was Kendall. Yeah. He tried to kill his dad, yep. didn't work, and just, you know, did drugs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they should have all done. Yeah, he was getting fucked up the whole time, yep. and the whole time he was doing it right. Yep. He can feel good about that birthday now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my da our dad was going to fuck us over anyway, so, yeah. yeah. I think he had it. So crazy. You know, like we were talking about yesterday, the episode was shot really well, too. Beautiful. Oh, my God. What perfect scenery for an episode like that. Yeah. It's Lake Como, right? That's where the uh, Matson's house was. Lake Como, Lake Com Lake Gummo. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's fucking beautiful. What's this poster? What's this poster that you have linked here? <clears throat> poster hinting at ending. Click, oh. click, 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 click. Um, I'm. What is it? I'm sorry. I've talked about this before, but you. Uh, but the sides here are so fucking funny to me. Could you imagine Logan only having Tom Gregg in his corner? He'd commit double oh, the homicide. Po oh, so on the on the succession poster, it's Tom and Greg on the oh side of Logan. Oh, my God. 
How did we not see it? How? I love... I love when this happens and people are like, Oh, think back to the dialogue in episode three. Yeah. It was hinting at this. Of course it fucking was. Yeah. They write the end before they write the middle. Yeah. 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 How did... Man. Now I just feel like an idiot. <laughs> Clear as day. So what was the... Uh, we were talking yesterday about the Jeremy Strong profile and mm. Aaron Sorkin writing a letter defending, defending him. Jeremy, yeah. Can we see that? Oh, oh wow, that's a the... list. Oh, TLDR. Oh. I'm not reading oh. that. Uh, damn. This, that's not a letter, man. That's a fucking essay. I skimmed it just now. It's not that good. That has a <laughs> that has a conclusion paragraph. What is the? Can you guys? Did you guys read it? Yeah, it's essentially just bringing up some of the questions that Aaron Sorkin was asked for the profile on Jeremy Strong, and then Aaron Sorkin basically trying to like undermine that and say Jeremy Strong is still a good person. Got was it. the profile claiming he was a bad person? No. Just that he was hard to work with, and that right, he was right. kind of disrespectful. Ah, uh, well, whatever. Do you like Sorkin? Um, Sorkin D's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, man. I went to uh, I went to the Chargers game on Sunday. Oh, you're a football guy now. Yeah, no. <laughs> you sure? No, I would say I'm less of a football guy now. Oh, okay. Why? Because NFL just sucks live. Yeah, most sports are not that great live. It sucked. What was the bad stadium about it? was sick though? Yeah. Uh, SoFi. Oh, uh, down in what? SoFi Stadium. It's pretty cool. The one in Inglewood. Yeah. Yeah. Brand new, like crazy. The whole thing is like super vertical, vertically stacked, so that like everyone can see the field. So, Interesting. Like, the no like it just feels when you're in the nosebleeds, which is where our seats were. It just feels like you're like three stories or more, like above everything else. That's cool. Pretty wild. Man. And the 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 screen they have a three sixty big screen with screens on the inside and the outside. Oh. So you can see it no matter where you are in the stadium. stadium. It's pretty <laughs> fucking crazy. But yeah, the games just sucked. Uh, who'd they play? Uh the Giants. I mean spanked them. The Giants spanked the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm about to get a lot of hate, but uh, it's the it's the Chargers. I mean, they're not they're not a terrible team. No, sorry, the Chargers spanked the Giants. Sorry, they're not. Sorry. We bet on the Giants, so I got spanked. Oh, so that's, that's why what you're I was upset. About. Oh, here I am talking shit about the Chargers and they're eight and five. They're not. They're not a bad team. It just say. felt like I don't know. It just felt like everything. <laughs> I know the Chargers came from San Diego, right? Yeah, but like, did <clears> the fans <throat> also come? Because it just, it just felt like all the shit was so forced. Like, bolt up and all the sayings. Like, it oh, just, no. I think it's only been in L.A. for two years. Well, I think... So it just felt like everything they were doing was, like, these new traditions that they were trying to, like, make a thing, you know? Oh, I, I wouldn't doubt that that's what it was. I, a lot of people were pissed that the Chargers got moved. Um, and for a while, people would comment that they could just tell the Chargers fans in L.A., like, didn't really give a shit. Yeah. So... I mean, they do, but it's because everyone's blacked out. Yeah. Everyone there was so fucked up. Yeah. That they're all like, bolt up! <laughs> like, do you even know what you're saying? Yeah. What does bolt up even mean? Yeah. Was that the saying for the Chargers in San Diego? No, I think... No, because they changed the logo, right? It used to be like a... I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Football, no, the, football fans are cringing right now. No, the, the old slogan used to be, um, bolt these nuts in your mouth. <laughs> That's what they used to say in San Diego. Yeah. That's a way better saying than yeah. bolt up. The guy would get on the, you know, the announcer would get on the radio to the stadium. All right, Chargers fans, let our visitors know. Bolt these nuts. <laughs> bolt these nuts. Bolt. And everyone would be fucked up. Bolt these nuts. And then they came to L.A. And then L.A. was like, we're going to do a little bit different. <laughs> Gonna make it a little bit more welcoming, you know, something that the kids and, and the moms can say. We're just gonna go with bolt up. <laughs> Fuck that, dude. <laughs> Fuck LA. <laughs> so there's yeah. this dude, this group of people in front of us, all of them were blacked out, right? Mm -hmm. It was like this these two guys and these two girls, and clearly like they were married to each other, you know? Yeah. Like, they were they were two couples. Yeah. 
And the dudes were so drunk that they were standing up and like every once in a while the guy would like turn around because there was he was wearing a Chargers jerseys and there was like Giants fans behind us. Oh, so he'd kind of like turn around to like try and mock them or whatever. And we were behind him, so he'd turn around every time just with this horribly like just glazed over look like this. And he'd be like looking at like Giants fans, like trying to mock them. And we're looking at this guy, like this guy is looking like I don't even like through the stadium. He's no idea where he is. And the guy and the guy beside him was doing the same thing, but was so drunk that he was like he kept like patting his girlfriend on the shoulder. Like, is it like go Giants? Like, look at what they're doing. And was so drunk that he didn't realize she was bawling her eyes out to her friend. <laughs> so she was like clearly just like in ruins about something. I don't know. She's like bawling to her friend and is her boyfriend is so drunk that he's like just grabbing her shoulder and like moving it. Like, look what's happening on the field. <laughs> Sounds like a really healthy situation. Yeah, it was so funny. Sounds like everyone's getting what they need out of that yeah. scenario. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, live sports. <laughs> Did a whole like bit about this shit. <laughs> Live sports is such a spectacle, man. It's so it's funny depending on the sport how it is. Like baseball is funny to me because I feel like baseball has these unique things where the stadium's been there since nineteen something and it's like multiple generations of people have come to that stadium. So they have like a certain like entitlement about how the game and the stadium should be and yeah. how people should act. And they just treat it like their own fucking living room. And, you know, they're just, they're just looking for someone to put peanuts on the wrong part of the floor. Yeah, like, what the fuck are you doing? yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I don't know. It's funny. So, but did you have a good time? No. No, I didn't. It sucked, honestly. <laughs> it yeah, wasn't fun at all. Football, no commentary, I think, is, is it's kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, now that we're basketball at basketball, is just so much better to watch live. Yeah, basketball. Like going to the is Duke game live. in Vegas, that was that was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the energy is better and it's just like more action. Yeah, yeah. Football sucks. Hot take. This guy goes to one fucking game and says all of foot live football sucks. Cool, dude. Yeah, I'll stand by that. Football sucks. Come at me. Yeah. Um, what, what happened in, oh, but the fucking MMA fights this weekend. Oh my God. Yeah. Such a good card. Mm hmm Yeah. It oh was, my God, that Nunez fight. Was one of those. Yeah, that was, I had like a, I've had a dark feeling for a while that Amanda just has been checked out and understandably no one has come close to yeah. putting her in danger. Yeah. Um, and, uh, shout out to Pena. She got. She got Amanda to be flat-footed and just take it on the fucking face. And I have a feeling Amanda's not going to come back. No? Yeah. I have a feeling like she's just fine. She's just, yeah, I lost. Whatever. Because she's just been dominating for years and years and years. Yeah. Finally, she's like, <laughs> yeah. God, finally, I know what it feels like. Yeah. She just wanted to lose one time. Yeah, she's like, yeah. Done. I'm out. Yeah. I could see it. Um, but uh, the... Oliveira fight was was great. It was good. Yep. Um it was definitely good. That's, you know, two two title attempts and both he he got subbed. Yeah. Which is which is rough. What and was the first one? Khabib. Ah. Mhm. Mm so now what's interesting is Khabib has been coaching. Um and he's been coaching this, this kid Islam and uh he's really confident that Islam will be the the next champion to take, you know take out Charles. Hmm. Um, I think Justin Gaethje is going to fight next. I don't know. That whole division is killers, but um, this sets a very interesting stage, the fact that Charles won. I think Charles might be a champion for a while because he, he has that psycho belief in God. Mm. You, you, saw what, you saw what he said within th 30 seconds of winning? No. He's like, he's like looking like a fucking video game character in a, you know, a post-fight sequence. He just yap into the camera, and then when they finally get a mic up to him, they're like, "What did he? What did you say? What did you say?" And he's like, uh, uh, "These guys talk. Uh, I do. You know." He's like, "You thought this, that, that," and then he ends the sentence with, "But it was him the whole time." And oh, he no. points up to the ceiling. <laughs> oh no! It's like, yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No one's coming close to that. 
<laughs> no one is fucking with that for a while. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny to be the best fighter. You it's like you got to relinquish belief in yourself. Oh yeah, you have to <laughs> has to come from another place. <laughs> that's the only way you can get like inhuman ability. Yeah. Is to believe, is to believe the ability is not coming from yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of deep. <laughs> it is. It's pretty deep to Pam. sock someone multiple fucking times in the face. Yeah. Uh, and then and then restrict their breathing and then think like God did that. <laughs> that is something else. Not like too. God's upstairs with a fucking Xbox yeah, controller. Yeah. B A A A B. All right, choke him out. Yeah. <laughs> Swivel grab L1 R1. Yeah. So crazy. <laughs> Cause that's terrifying. You know, you get in the ring and that dude is just like looking through you, like I, I'm gonna do this for Jesus. Yeah. Whoa. I am a vessel. Yeah. For a high, po- higher power. Yeah. He's just like a, like yeah, he's just like a meat, a meat shield. You yeah. Know? <laughs> or a, what, what's no. the word? A puppet. He's literally a skin suit for Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. It's actually crazy that Jesus from heaven is just through the ether, just suiting up yeah. and beating on humans. <laughs> <laughs> He's just stepping into other humans, like, like just fucking Pacific Rim, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna fuck this dude up." <laughs> That's how Jesus gets it out. This is so fun. Yeah. Just beating the shit out of my creations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a card. We'd like to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, Skylight Frames. Listen, this past year has taught us how important sharing moments with friends and family is, and how hard it is to stay in touch when they're far away. Skylight is the perfect gift for that. Yeah. For a really special gift for the special someone in your life, you've got to check out the Skylight Frame. Skylight Frame is a photo frame you can update instantly by email from anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sets up effortlessly. Oh, does it? Just under 60 seconds. What? You just plug it in. Use a touchscreen to connect to your wireless network and enjoy. Sending photos to Skylight is effortless. Did I say that already? Yeah. Everyone in the family can just email them to your personal Skylight email address and they'll pop up in seconds. Multiple people can send photos to the frame, so it's a great way to keep large networks of friends and families in touch. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Skylight frame has a gorgeous 10-inch touch screen. Wow. Gorgeous. And wow. 10 inches big. You can swipe through photos with your finger and even tap to thank the person who sent a photo. Wow. Yeah. 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your Skylight, they'll offer you a full refund. It's so simple that even my non-tech savvy mom and dad could set it up and use it. They, I mean, they're they're pretty fucking tech savvy, honestly. So <laughs> they could probably figure it out. But if yours aren't, then they could figure it out too. The point is, it's easy for people, for anyone to use. Yeah. So what's the offer? Uh, well, the offer right now is very special. You can get ten dollars off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code Tiny. That's right. Get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com and enter code TINY. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com. Promo code TINY. I, I do want to cover the F1 thing because it was such a... Yeah, I need you to explain to me what exactly happened. There, there I is saw so, so many people talking about it. There is so much context. I'm going to do the best to say this within a couple minutes. Um, all of you F1 nerds, before you start fucking projecting these opinions and shit onto me. I'm just going to try to give this even, so I don't give a fuck what you think should have happened. Just shut up. Okay. Jeez. No, you have to be that way because F1 fans are the most argumentative gatekeeping. They're so annoying. Okay. So uh, in Formula One, at a baseline, you should understand that there are a lot of, their crashing is very, it's just a. Sick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got it's it. A, it's a it's it's bound to happen. Okay. So the procedure for that is what's called a safety car. Okay. And typically that th- they have two versions, one that's virtual, which is this is kind of sick just like from a technology standpoint. It just tells them in their steering wheel this is a virtual safety car and they put their speed down and like they run the track at 40% speed. Um and it's just kind of crazy that they can I don't know, issue rules and stuff like that specific. I see. Like so ma- they do that in order to navigate whatever wreckage <clears throat> is on the... Yeah, and it's to... Before they clear it out or something? Yeah, so okay. typically virtual is issued if like 
someone hits a curb and then like a fucking carbon fiber piece like lands in the middle of the track. And if it's like a high speed area of the track or something, it's like, hey, slow down. A marshal is going to just hop over the fence, run out, grab that piece, and then we're back to racing. Okay. So then full safety car is when the crash is really bad and they have a car actually get out in front and lead the cars um, so that I guess it's to sort of like control the pace of the mm -hmm. cars and make sure something, whatever, doesn't happen. Okay, now you know that. Okay. So the context of this season was really intense because there were rule changes and Mercedes has dominated for seven years. And then in this year, Red Bull was actually like challenging for it in a very convincing way. This kid, Max Verstappen, he came into Formula One at 17 years old. He's a fucking demon. Uh, he's just been putting up wins. And it's like, for the first time, he's showing that someone can possibly beat Lewis Hamilton. He drives for Red Bull. He drives for Red Bull. Okay. Yeah. Um, Max, and, Max does, not Lewis. Yeah. Okay. And there are people that put an asterisk next to Lewis because, like, there's one championship where a dude crashed out and it changed the points structure and he took a championship from another person blah 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 whatever i don't care um so going into this season it's been really tense there was a big crash in in the british grand prix um that was really controversial there's another one in italy that was really controversial and um going into this it was like the perfect storm because it ended up being that they were on fucking even points <laughs> So, you know, it's literally winner takes all. Really? Yeah. Okay. And this has what, what is the championship or what's like the there's, trophy? There's two championships. Um, drivers individually are awarded points for like first, first through 10th place. Yeah. So there's the World Drivers Championship where you've, as a driver, you've won the most points out of the season. And this yeah. was the last race. This is the very last race. Okay. Yeah. And then there's the constructors where as a team, you've won the most points. Okay. So, Going into this for the World Drivers Championship, this is the, it's even points for Lewis and Max. And the speculation is that Lewis wanted to end it here because next year starts a whole new era of construction of Formula One car. And people are thinking he wanted to get the eight, beat Michael Schumacher's record, and then just be out. Um, so it was really tense. All right, so now the context of the race is this. Um, the Mercedes car, was showing to be a fucking like rocket ship. It was so fucking fast. Um, in the qualifying round, Max Verstappen happens to just clinch the first place spot. So he's starting in uh, first place on the grid and then Lewis is on second place. And historically, whoever has the first place grid slot from qualifying wins the race. Okay. Um, so and Max had the first. Max had okay. it first. So it's looking good because everyone was worried, oh, is the Red Bull car fast enough to compete with the Mercedes car this year? And if Max was able to oust Lewis in qualifying, surely there's a chance. So uh, the race starts and Lewis fucking bolts. He just, he's gone. And they go into this turn and it was really controversial because Max, he dives down on an opening and he makes the move within the the limits of the track but lewis goes off and he cuts the corner and stays in front so max is now on radio being like hey he needs to give me the position back i i took it from him fairly within the limits of the track he needs to issue it back to me and the referees basically they tell red bull no he doesn't because lewis slowed down and whatever he gained from that uh whatever advantage was given back so max is within what you know, the distance he was within prior to that move. Um, it didn't matter because Lewis goes on to put fucking 10 seconds of a gap ahead of Max. So he's leading the race um, and it's not looking like Red Bull really has a shot. So um, Max pits early because he, he was on like a faster set of tires, which basically just means the car moves faster. Um, so he pits for a different set to try to like it's a longer lasting set of tires. So like maybe when Lewis has to pit later in the race, Max will, can like make up some time there. Now it's just coming down to like race strategy. This is the part this gets confusing. So fuck all this. Um, there is a moment like about midway through the race where Max's teammates, he stays out. So he doesn't pit. 
Lewis Pitts, now Lewis, you know, is coming from like fourth place trying to reclaim first. And Max is down in like sixth or seventh and he's, you know, whatever, trying to catch up to Lewis. So now Red Bull is doing like this pincering thing where as Lewis is approaching first, Max's teammate is slowing down and like putting up a battle. So now Lewis doesn't have clean laps because he's trying to get around Sergio. Um, Sergio does an insane job and reduces the gap between Max and Lewis to fucking one and a half seconds, which okay. is insane. It okay. went from 12 to one and a half. So now Max seems like he has a fighting chance, but fucking again, the Mercedes car is on fire and, you know, Lewis takes off. There's a point where the gap is 17 seconds. Um, and uh, with six laps left to go, this kid, Nicholas Latifi, is Canadian. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He fucking I finally started listening to the story. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know, I know. It's I'm like kidding. it's no, boring no, no, I'm shit. Kidding. It's... I'm kidding. I'm really interested in this. So keep going. So six laps left. Lewis, it's looking like he's definitely gonna take this home. Um Nicholas, he gets into what's called like the dirty air. And the thing about Formula One cars is they move so fast that they're like airplanes and they displace the air behind them. So if you're a car coming up behind and you're in the dirty air, the air is literally turbulent. So the, the car performance is fucking unpredictable because, like, the whole chassis is fighting air. Yeah. Nicholas TV gets in the dirty air and he spins and he fucking crashes. So uh, Max has track position and he, he pits for a new set of soft tires. Lewis's tires are, like, 30-some laps old. So Max is going to have crazy grip. The thing I forgot to mention is you can pit during a safety car. It's okay. like a cheap pit stop. Okay. A pit stop on average takes like 24 seconds. If you do it under a safety car, it only costs you like 17 or some okay. shit. All right. So you need to know all that so you can understand like this final lap. So Lewis doesn't pit because if he pits, he would have came out behind Max. So he has to stay out on these old tires. And uh, Formula One cars, they naturally, the faster cars lap the other cars. So it creates a lot of like weird grid order because two cars can be like first and second, but cars in between them can be, in this case, like positions four through five or six and seven. So Max Pitts, he comes out and he's behind like five cars. Who was the one who crashed, by the way? Nicholas Latifi. Okay. That's yeah. a Canadian guy. Yes, Canadian guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I yeah, got it. Sorry. So whatever. So. Um, the sa a, a, a safety car comes out and it's leading the cars, which means, you know, uh, it's looking like the race is going to end under a safety car. Okay. And Mercedes is thinking, okay, th this is fine. Um, uh, whatever, like we're going to win. Um, but randomly, uh, so all the, cause they think they're going to win because the referees told everyone no one can unlap themselves. So that means Max has to stay behind the five cars. And even on the off chance that they go racing for like one or two more laps, he still has to get through those five cars to catch up to Lewis. The cars are rolling around track and on the, like, they're on the, like, the lap before the last one. Suddenly, the FIA, who was like, they're like the refs. They make a call on radio and say, nope, lapped cars can unlap themselves. And then Mercedes is like, wait, what the fuck? Like, you can't do that. You literally just said, like, you're, you're basically like reversing the call you made. So that enables Max to jump the five cars. So now he's on a fresh set of tires. He is side by side with Lewis, who is on 30 old, you know, tires that are 30 laps old. And um, when a safety car resumes, you can't use something called DRS, which is like, it's like a little turbo boost. It's like the wing position changes and the car can like catch up. I know this is like really fucking long, but basically they fucking trigger the one lap left of racing and Max has brand new tires. So of course he's going to smoke Lewis and he fucking takes the win. And he takes the world championship despite not having led the race for 51 and a half laps. Hmm. So the whole thing felt like 
it's this season that had so many points of controversy, so many like, you know, oh, uh, it could go like this, it could go like that. And it comes down to this moment where it feels like the refs just kind of look around and go, yeah, just give it to Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, just, you yeah. know. And what, what made it like, what added insult to injury is, you know, Lewis is like the first, you know, really successful black Formula One driver ever. And, and uh, that's why, he, he, like, you know, he is such a special guy in a field that is like dominated really by just like, you know, other people. And um, what was really kind of gross was how many people came out and were like, oh, I'm really glad Michael Schumacher's record wasn't broken. Like, that's what they took from the whole thing. Uh, it's like, ugh, you, that's what you got from that? Right. Like, you didn't want Lewis to have it? Like, why not? Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy if he does, right? Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think it just, it stained what could have been a very legit uh, ending, hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so is it legal to, like, reverse a call like that? Technically, it is. I guess it's it's it's. And it's, what what comes down to why they make that call? Like, why would? So the joke is that the FIA are like the refs, and people always spell it like they prefix it with ma, so it's mafia. Mm. So a lot of people feel like so eh, Tony was up there. Yeah, a lot of people feel it was it Getting was tone zone. Sucked. It was tone zone. Yeah, and he's like, I like Red Bull. Mm -hmm. Why don't you let Red Bull basically pick up the phone and reverse that call? Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's those that, those are people's feelings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure I missed some things in there, and someone will tell me I got something wrong or whatever. But the but, gist of it is that on on paper, Max was never really leading the race. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. So, Interesting. So, so, why, so it's rigged. That's like that's the other complaint is people are like, <laughs> okay, if you want to reverse calls, that's fine. But like. It's so wildly inconsistent. How does anyone even ever want to watch this again? Because it's like literally up to you guys mm -hmm. how, how you guys want it to go. Um, then other people are joking that you know Netflix put in the call so that they could have a really dope Drive to Survive season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's ugly. Damn, that thank you. Thank you for describing that to Yeah, me. and I'm sorry. I, I No, no, I needed to know. It was a pretty frustrating thing. I woke up at fucking five. <laughs> yeah, I saw. <laughs> I like, you know what I mean? Like I woke up from doing those shows to watch that horse shit. I was like, this is a joke, man. <laughs> I fucking woke up at 5 a.m. for this bullshit. Literally, man. <laughs> Literally. But I guess reps are bullshit in every sport, so. I just yeah. think it's uh maybe the refs are Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the guy the guy's name is Michael Massey and I would be afraid to go outside if I was that dude. Why? Oh, oh just because Oh, so many people are probably wow, like he's I, infamous. I mean everyone English hates him. Now is, because of that call or yeah. because of other I mean all season he's been a little bit uh and he's had questionable moments but I think that one, you know, yeah, because all you know, a lot of English fans are for Lewis, and you know, they they saw that, and it's it's off with your fucking head. <laughs> if we see you in fucking London, we're gonna cut your fucking head off. Like he's a dead man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's fucking. He needs to buy a new face, <laughs> which he probably can. Yeah, with that mafia money. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah, that he's getting slipped. Yeah, yeah. Fucking. Listen, I like the taste of Red Bull. Yeah. I like that stuff. Keeps yeah. me awake. Why don't you make the call? <laughs> Why don't we just cruise into the bonus? Yeah, I guess so. Starting. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Newsletter, tmgstudios.tv. Yeah, go sign up. Go sign up. We Do appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.